hot stop in the 1950s. Many may recall that during the post-election violence of 2008, our labor movement was the first one to begin mediation efforts between warring divides. Indeed, their efforts to resolve the crisis had been recorded way before the arrival of the first international mediator. This uncelebrated role of the labor movement in Kenya must be put on record more so their ability to act swiftly in times of crisis and for that as a country we are grateful. Asante sana. Fellow Kenyans I have submitted in the past indicating that a crisis like the COVID-19 pandemic represents also threats, but it also represents opportunity. Some get paralyzed by the hurdles, and they, unfortunately, end up doing nothing but complain. But those who see opportunity in the face of challenges also produce innovations. And because there are no workers without industry, I would like to take mention of two innovative industries during the past 14 months of COVID. The first one is Hella, Hella Clothing Limited. When the COVID pandemic hit our country, this EPZ company quickly discovered the opportunity and switched to the production of PPEs and fa face masks. By rejecting paralysis and embracing innovation, this company saved over 300 workers from joblessness. As Hella Clothing Limited was making this transition, the World Health Organization indi indicated that there was a monthly deficit of 89 million masks globally to fight COVID-19. Faced with this opportunity, Hella was swift to produce 10 million masks during the months of April and May. This meant that a single factory in Kenya manufactured one out of 18 masks globally to close the World Health Organization deficit. The second industry I'd like to mention is Betty Investments, a Kenyan apparel company based in Akuru, where the COVID pandemic hit Betty Investments retooled its productive capacity due to the fall in clothing demand from the West. Over 800 workers stared at unemployment due to falling demand from their partners, especially in the US and Europe. By July of 2020, however, Betty began producing PPEs and masks their production capacity of PPEs shot with speed to 10,000 PPEs daily. And instead of firing its 800 workers, Betty actually hired another 300 workers to cope with the heavy demand, not just from Kenya, but also from our neighboring countries. Today, Betty Investments is responsible for manufacturing 80% of all PPEs available in Kenya and over 70% of the PPEs that are being supplied to our surrounding countries. The success of these two companies under mention was made possible because they were not paralyzed by the COVID crisis, but instead seized the opportunity and created innovations. But above all, their innovations preserved the much needed jobs and even created new ones. Fellow Kenyans, I have spoken about swift action of the labor movement and the innovative ventures of the employer in industry. But now I will turn to the unbroken spirit of the worker. I have severally led our nation in celebrating our doctors, our nurses, our clinical officers, and all medical support staff who have worked without tiring for the past 14 months of this pandemic. Their current life of sacrifice and danger 
is without doubt a true testament that nothing is impossible and they have taught us that if we put our hearts and minds to the service of others selflessly we can indeed find our true happiness to honor the sacrifice made by our health workers therefore I believe that we as citizens must exercise continuous civic responsibility we must not overwhelm our health system by acting irresponsibly and raising the rate of admissions into our hospitals unnecessarily. Let us repay the sacrifice of our workers with civic responsibility. I lead the nation in celebrating our law enforcement and administration officers on this Labor Day also. These are probably the most unappreciated workers but the most stretched by the COVID pandemic. We as a caring nation have noted their service, their dedication, their sacrifice, and we thank them for it. So indeed, I lead the nation in celebrating the invisible workers of our markets during COVID. They are the invisible suppliers who have kept our nation running in the face of difficult times. From the truck drivers who deliver our food from far to the women in Marigiti who have distributed food continuously from 4 a.m. in the morning to the border border riders who connect the delivery dots to the digital sellers who make this possible and I want to thank you all and fundamentally I wish to thank every Kenyan whose unsung efforts support our resilience against the challenges that we face today Fellow Kenyans, let me end with some reflections on our current COVID-19 status as a nation. When I issued the Second Public Order Act of 2021 in March of this year, announcing the obtaining containment measures, our COVID caseload in Nairobi alone was 56,815. This caseload has now gone down to below 15,000 for the month of April signifying a 74% decrease in infections in Nairobi. Data from our medical experts suggest that the same trend in the zoned areas we put on lockdown during March 26th of this year, after one month of lockdown, the COVID case load within the zoned areas has come down by 72%. In other areas of the Republic, the COVID caseload fell by 89% and in Mombasa and 90% in Busia between March and April of 2021. Given expert advice that we have received and on counsel of the National Security Council, as well as the National Emergency Response Committee on COVID-19, I therefore on this day issue public order number three of 2021 as follows. That one with regard to the zoned areas comprising of the counties of Nairobi, Machakos, Kiambu, Kajiado and Nakuru, it is directed that the cessation of movement into and out of the zoned areas be and is hereby lifted. Two, that the hours of curfew in the zoned area are revised to commence at 10 p.m. and end at 4 p.m. with effect from midnight on this day of May 2021 until otherwise directed. Three, that in-person and congregational worship shall resume in strict fidelity to the guidelines issued by the Interfaith Council and the Ministry of Health However, the attending congregation is still capped to one-third of the capacity of the place of worship. And that for the operations of restaurants and eateries in the zoned areas shall resume in accordance with the guidelines issued jointly by the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife and restaurants are indeed encouraged to utilize outdoor spaces to maximize on physical and social 
distancing. For the entirety of the Republic of Kenya, it is directed as follows. That one, all our educational institutions in all levels of learning shall reopen in accordance with the calendar issued by the Ministry of Education. And two, that the resumption of sporting activities shall be guided by the regulations to be issued by the Ministry of Health jointly with the Ministry of Sports. Three, that all bars in the territory of the Republic of Kenya are to operate until 7 p.m. And I repeat, 7 p.m. Four, all employ employers and enterprises are encouraged to allow their workers to work from home with the exception being with respect to